Hi everybody, this is Josh Kirk back with you guys once again on YouTube. And now it's time for episode 20 of Album of the Day, as I promised. And I'm sorry I haven't done much reviews in a while, mostly because I've been busy on a lot of things, whether it's school and a lot of homework and stuff, or like, um, you know, just busy on the internet looking at videos and stuff. Like, a lot of things to think about, but now it's fresh, and I'm ready to do a review. Now I, now I know I said that in episode 19, where I was doing four short reviews of four albums from this year, um, I know I said that I, uh, would, that I would, uh, do another episode like episode 20 with uh, four more short reviews, but I decided since I want to get back on track since I haven't been doing reviews a lot lately, I'm just today I'm just challenging myself to um, review um, an album, uh, just one album, because you know I really missed out on that opportunity in the past, but you know now I'm just gonna get right back to it. So today's artist is a singer-songwriter who you may remember I reviewed in October of 2012, uh, an album with, uh, his name is Stephen Kellogg. You may remember back in October, I believe it was like October, I think it was like October 12th, 2012, I reviewed one of his albums with his band The Sixers who are on a hiatus right now have been since uh, the beginning of 2013, um, called Gift Horse, which was released on October 11th, 2011. Uh, but I decided to review him again because Stephen Kellogg himself actually watched um, my review of Gift Horse and was like moved to tears by the review, and uh, I thought it would be great to do another review since I'm going to see him soon. and. Uh, uh, participate in a meet and greet too. Um, so I'm here to review his uh, most recent solo album with members of the Sixers along with a bunch of other musicians and special guests of members from other bands that I really like. Uh, so here's the album I'm going to review for you today. The album is called Blunderstone Rickery. Um, Stephen Kellogg, this is, this is actually not his first solo album. In fact, He's been writing songs and making music since like, I don't know, like 1992, 1993 or something. He put out a few solo records, I think. As for the solo records, he put out like one in 1994, one in 1997, one in um, 2000, which I have heard of before and I have a copy of South of Stephen uh, along with um, a 2002 solo record. Uh, which I also have and have heard of before that's also excellent, along with South and Stephen called uh, Lucky Eleven. Like, that's an excellent album. Uh, South and Stephen is a lot more acoustic based, a lot more Americana, all country, folky sort of influenced, while um, uh, Lucky Eleven is a lot more poppy, but not like in a bad way or anything, but just, you know. It feels a lot more poppy, like the hooks are a lot more like, you know, pop rockish that might appeal to like, you know, fans of some high school and college people that uh, really dig like, they really dig like college rock music and stuff, you know, people like Bare Naked Ladies, uh, OAR, Jack Johnson, people like that, um, some people like that. Um, but this is, um, his first solo album in, like, ten years, in, like, a long time. So I didn't expect him to put out a solo album, but, uh, I was, I was a bit devastated when I heard the Sixers were about to take a hiatus, but, but trust me, like, yeah, I was disappointed in the hiatus a little bit. Um, no offense to the Stephen Kellogg fans, uh, but, um... But it's okay. I got over it fast, and I'm still listening to the Sixers' music, because I love what he did with the Sixers. 
great harmonies, great choruses, and just top-notch songwriting from Stephen Kellogg, and, and some and some great production too, with the folky Americana sort of alt-country vibe that he's been providing us since like a long, long time when very few people knew about him. Uh, like, but then a lot of people knew about him once the self-titled Stephen Kellogg and the Sixers album came out due to hit singles like You've Changed and uh, I don't know if Flower and Rain is a single, but that's an excellent song along with Maria, My Sweet Charade. Um, Such a Way is a really beautiful ballad. My mom loves that one a lot. Um, and Vegas is pretty good. Uh, a lot more energetic, a lot more rock than anything on the album, but is still excellent. Um, Start the Day Early, Anthem of Our Discovery, and uh, See You Later, See You Soon, and also the tracks Blue Jean and uh, Keep Me In Your Thoughts are, are pretty good too. Too like Blue Jean has more of a folky Americana all country feel to it. Uh, I know I'm saying that a lot in this video, but you know, Stephen Kellogg just has that vibe quite a bit. And, um, and the closer, keep me in your thoughts, is beautiful, and I think that was meant to be the closer, and, and that album got praise reviews from critics, along with Glass Jaw Boxer, like, Bulletproof Heart is definitely a lot more unknown, but, you know, I feel like it's better underrated than overrated, even though Stephen Kellogg and the Sixers have been a little bit popular then. And uh, The Bear, I feel like, is the absolute gem in their discography. In fact, I feel The Bear might be my favorite album of theirs, because, seriously, I could not put down that album. It was that good. That good. Like, I have a feeling it's the absolute gem in their discography, mostly because it shows I'm moving in a bunch of new directions that I've never heard them use in, like, earlier records, mostly because, you know, production's a little different, but... But the album is excellent. So, like, musically, lyrically, and vocally, too. Like, you know, very unique sounding record. And Gift Horse, of course, uh, top notch songwriting, excellent production, and, you know, fabulous vocals, and with uh, great harmonies from uh, Kit Carlson, Boots Factor, and uh, Sam Getz on there. Uh, but, but, but anyway, aside from. His side discography, we're going to talk about Blunderstone Rookery, because I want to get this review out of the way, because, you know, I want to get one out there, because um, I know all of you miss me on the internet, so. Anyway, here's the cover, the spine, and the back. The songs on here are Lost and Found, The Brain is a Beautiful Thing, Forgive You, Forgive Me, Men and Women, Crosses, I Don't Want to Die on the Road, Good Old Days. Red one, good red wine, featuring Audra May, uh, the best Thanksgiving and Ingrid song. This is released on uh, his Fat Sam label, which, of course, he's been signed to that label for a long time. Uh, there's the fat cat on the logo right there. And speaking of cats, in the background is uh, my my cat Cinnamon, and uh, I think he's under the bed. Uh, nutmeg. Uh, both of my cats have really grown lately. Um, the first time I showed they were there was on arrival day, and they were really little. But now, they're they're growing up a lot, and you know, just happy to have had them after my last cat Silver passed away. And uh, and uh, Elm City Music, which I think this is the first album that Stephen Kellogg has done signed to Elm City. But anyway, here's cover again, spine, just trying to keep my hands off it, and there's the back with all the songs. I like to, like, you know, keep my hands off of the case for a little bit, just, you, just so I'm not covering anything up, so that's why I like to give you guys a second look of what the album packaging looks like. Here's the inside, there's a picture of Steve Kellogg, uh, he has a tattoo in that picture with, uh, the names of her four daughters, which are Sophia, uh, Adeline, Noelle, and uh, her most recent one, Greta. And she's done songs for all 
four of them except for um, Greta, but hopefully she'll like write a song for her. But hopefully he'll write a song for Greta, like on the next record. Um, but anyway, there's him. And uh, there's another picture of him right there. And uh, I'll show you the booklet inside of here. Um, um, there's a picture of Stephen Kellogg right there. And uh, it has the lyrics and the credits for every song. Which, you know, is pretty important to me. Wouldn't be fair otherwise, but not that I don't, you know, accept having to have a few albums where there isn't any lyrics. Because the music and, like, the audio, like, the quality of the music is really what's important to me. Like, if the album's good, I'm, like, if the album's really good, I'm, I'm definitely great with that. A lot of lyrics for Thanksgiving. In fact, that song is 10 minutes long, which uh, you're going to hear me praise that song later in the video. It's uh, probably the best song in the album, in my opinion, which makes sense because it is the first single off of the album. Well, not really a single because it's 10 minutes, but um, Crosses is the first single, which uh, Crosses, I think, is like on probably the B side of Thanksgiving, but I don't know. But I know Thanksgiving was released on like a 7-inch, like a 45 record, uh, before, just three months before the release of this album. And then there's all the production credits and everything. Uh, like It's produced by Stephen Kellogg and Kit Carlson, which... Of course, was the keyboardist, bass player, and one of the backing vocalists of the Sixers. But he, he doesn't really play bass on here. One of his bandmates, Chip Johnson, does. And he also and Chip also plays guitar and drums and percussion. And sings backup vocals and a little bit of keyboards. Uh, on here, Kit, plays the, Kit Carlson plays things like keyboards and um, percussion and sings a little backup. Like, like uh, he sings back up on Forgive You, Forgive Me, and plays a chord organ on Men and Women, um, and uh, Fender Rhodes and Bells on Crosses, some some piano, a lot of piano here and there, specifically on I Don't Want to Die on the Road, where there's like an acoustic piano. Um, and uh, he plays drums on the best and adds sound effects in there, too. Um... And, uh, he, and he plays tuba on the last couple of tracks, so he's a really talented dude, in my opinion. <laughs> mm. And another cool thing is... <coughs> sorry about that. Uh, another cool thing about this album is that Mike Mogus, actually, Mike Mogus of Bright Eyes, and who's worked with a bunch of other people besides Bright Eyes, did the mixing on this album, so he's pretty talented too, even though he doesn't really play as much instruments as um, Kit Carlson does. In fact, he just plays tambourine on a few songs, but I'm pretty intrigued to see that he was involved in a little bit of it, like in the mixing of the record, because he's a pretty talented dude as well. Show you the front cover. And the back one more time. And I was so intrigued by the styles on this album that I ended up just um, listening to it like nonstop last summer. Showing you the front spine and the back with all the songs on it again. Alright, so as for the musicians on this album, besides Chip Johnson and Kit Carlson and Mike Mogus, like I mentioned, um, Travis McNabb plays most of the drums on the album, except for other tracks where Chip Johnson is playing drums in. Boots Factor is on this album, but he doesn't play drums on here. He plays banjo on a couple of songs, actually. Which, you know, is great, because, you know, Stephen Kellogg's backing bandmates in the Sixers are super talented. They can basically play just about any instrument, which I think is... Excellent for them, because I especially am intrigued by musicians who can really put their hands on any instrument and are not afraid to 
experiment with different sounds and stuff. Like, I feel like this album is Stephen Kellogg's most adventurous yet, specifically because of all the backing musicians he has. Um, like I just mentioned, Travis McNabb, but also on here is Jared Pizzo from OAR. Big thumbs up there. Um, which I was really excited about because I love OAR and Jerry DePizzo is an, is an excellent saxophone player and I feel like he had great collaborations to this album along with some of Stephen Kellogg's friends, uh, Brian Dolly and Richard Bogart, I, I don't know how to pronounce his name, along with a bunch of great guest spots like Luke Brindley on Forgive You, Forgive Me, um, along with... Uh, Sean Watkins, um, Watkins, um, uh, Ben Dean, uh, violin player, like, Sean Watkins plays guitar on crosses, and also on crosses there's, uh, Ben Dean playing violin on that song. The sound is more like a fiddle, but it's credited like a violin, but not like, uh, an orchestral string section or anything. And violinist Sarah Whitney is on here on a couple of tracks. Tracks, you know, excellent violin playing on this album. Um, uh, Chris Sanchez, I believe, does some of the... Uh, let me check. Um, Chris Sanchez engineered the album and also played congas on the song Good Old Days, in which uh, it was... He engineered it in Bridgeport, in Bridgeport, Connecticut, while Mike Mogus mixed the album in his ARC Studios in Omaha, Nebraska. Uh, and, uh, it was mastered by Bob Wig. Um, uh, Gateway Mastering in Portland, Maine. Uh, Chip Johnson was a musician on here, along with an associate producer. And uh, there's a lot of different engineers that I don't need to talk about on here. Uh, string arrangements by Adam and Matt Pond. The choral direction is by Papero, I suppose, is for the choir that's on Thanksgiving in the beginning and end. Um, there's art design, lay art design, layout, and cover illustration. And then there's some photo credits. The photos were taken by Kirsten Kellogg who I assume is probably Stephen Kellogg's wife or something like that, and uh, Ryan uh, Mestro. And it was written by Stephen Kellogg, Kit Carlson, Chip Johnson, and um, uh, Lori McKenna co-wrote Good Red Wine, too. And like, uh, of course, there's Audra May singing on Good Red Wine, who has an excellent voice, by the way, and uh, along with some uh, brass and string arrangements on it, the best um, Thanksgiving and Ingrid song, and of course the universally, uh, let me check, uh, the features the uh, uh, the University of Massachusetts Choral, which I'm not surprised about that one fact right there, because Stephen Kellogg is from Boston, Massachusetts, in which I, I, I would love to go to Boston sometime. Like, I would love to go to Boston, Massachusetts sometime. Because, you know, lots of great musicians there, like Stephen Kellogg, um, along uh, with uh, Chadwick Stokes of... Uh, Dispatch, who also has the Bay and State Radio that's releasing a new solo record, which, of course, my dad pre-ordered that, and, you know, I'm pretty stoked to hear that. But anyway, aside from all the guest appearances, and aside from all the members of the Sixers, the Sam Getz is on here, I forgot to mention that, playing guitar on most of the tracks, along pedal steel a little bit, sang on Forgive You, Forgive Me, because there's a lot of background vocals on that one. And, uh, and he played mandolin on crosses. There's actually two mandolins on the song. One played by Brian Dolly, one of uh, Stephen Kellogg's friends, who also sings background vocals. And, um, and uh, the other one played by Sam Guess, of course. But anyways, aside from 
all the members of the Sex Hers, um, and uh, all the friend musicians that he has on there, and all the guest spots on here. Um, aside from all that, let's get on to the review, talk about the songs. The, this album opens with the song Lost and Found, the first track on the album is Lost and Found, and this song uh, definitely does open the album on a pretty positive note. In fact, I think it was meant to be the opener, in my opinion, because it, it's nice to open the album with something a little more mellow, a little more chill, a little more relaxed, like this is definitely heavily based on acoustic guitars, uh, some very uh, minimal uh, percussion, uh, some very prominent uh, piano and keys from Kit Carlson, so along with um, a, a, a sort of a shadowy um, um, reverb slathered tambourine uh, in the background too in the bridge played by Mike Mogus. And the song actually uh, reminds me of old Fleetwood Mac. Like, believe it or not, I've never really heard of Fleetwood Mac before, but a lot of people kept saying that the song sounded like early Fleetwood Mac with, like, that guy I don't remember the name of doing the lead vocal when it was a lot more mellow, chill, and relaxed. Um, but, you know, just saying that anyway, but I'm not trying to steal from anybody since I like to make these reviews all my own. But, you know, that's lost and found. And lyrically, the message is pretty interesting. It sort of talks about how, you know, you shouldn't be surprised. Like, you can find someone who's, like, been in the lost and found category, and uh, you shouldn't be surprised if the lost and found category eventually, like, you know, goes away, that, you know, gets sort of debased and, uh, and you shouldn't be surprised that the lost and found category one day burns down. Like, the message on here pretty much intrigued me. Like, the rest of the songs really do intrigue me with the message, in my opinion. Um, track number two is called The Brain is a Beautiful Thing. And this song, yeah, this song rules. Uh, the song uh, definitely does pick the album up soon after the really mellow opener. Um... You know, it's definitely a lot louder, it sort of shows you that part of this album is probably going to make it overall like a straight ahead, like rock and roll album, which I really dig those records. I know, I know people are going to say, oh, it sounds cliche to put it that way, but I just love a straight ahead rock and roll album because it really does get me back to my roots, roots, and this song I really dug, in my opinion. Um... Like, you know, uh, some very uh, tight, very loud uh, acoustic and electric guitars. Uh, some very entertaining vocals uh, for Stephen Kellogg. Um, Kellogg, once the drums gets, once the drums get in, the song really does hit the spot and get a lot more fun for me. Uh, there's like a barroom piano in the background, so it so sort of sounds like something that I would hear in like a bar room or a barrel house or something like that. And uh, but one of the appearances on here that really did intrigue me was the fact that Jerry DePizzo plays the saxophone on here, that guy from OA Art and he's just he's just a great dude. He's just an excellent saxophone player and I have a feeling that his contributions to this album really just hit the spot for me. Really do really do something for me. Um, and uh, then there's some female group vocals on the background, accompanied by some rather distorted vocals from uh, Stephen Kellogg's friend. Brian Dolly sounds like he's using a megaphone or something like that. Or something like that. Like, And the song sort of talks about how, you know, we've all got our brains and, you know, uh, it's, it's all right because, you know, the brain can definitely be a beautiful thing, that's for sure. Because this song, a highlight for me. Uh, next song in here is track three. It's called Forgive You, Forgive Me. And if I were to choose another single from this album besides Crosses, this one would be it. Because this definitely sounds like something that's ready for like an alternative radio station. In fact, it wouldn't be, I wouldn't be surprised if this song becomes a single and then, you know, 
gets played on like a bunch of the alternative indie rock sta uh, radio stations, not like any of the poppy radio stations that you hear like constantly in your country, but uh, 